Hi all, Chris Stellian here for Game Keto. Going to cover a bit of unusual topic today. Um, something I've been kind of sitting on for now a couple summers, but as a toy I was playing with. Uh, and a lot of y'all know that central to my teaching philosophy for game development is to clone and rebuild aspects of games that you love to get to know them better. Well, then I like to show that I practice what I preach. So even though for a lot of my introductory material I focus on games from the 70s and 80s, I grew up playing games in the 90s, loved my Nintendo 64 games. And so I worked on, a couple summers ago, uh, remaking part of a popular Nintendo 64 game, which I believe is probably pretty obvious here. We're looking at GoldenEye, and it's just it only supports three guns. You know, I didn't support everything from it. Uh, the map actually was imported from a memory dump, the modder, uh, I believe, sub-drag in the game uh, GoldenEye setup multiplayer, some sort of utility tool built, and allows you to export meshes with some of the textures on them. Same story now, of course I had to animate these fellows myself, and uh, lots of things about it aren't quite spot on, you know, I'm always doing it for practice, but I was trying to figure out, can I get them to put red marks on their body where they're shot, like we used to see in the old games, and yeah, close. So when I first did this, it was on Unity, heck, probably three point something. Now with Unity 5's render to texture abilities, I probably could have done this a little better. Uh, we've got uh, working doors, which of course right now we're just kind of floating out in space. Uh, you might be wondering, do you see the shot decals? And you do. There's our shot decals, uh, as well as we have the basic physics for shooting around the ammo box. I can get the ammo box, can reload my gun. Uh, same deal, I can shoot the armor, moves around. I can pick it up. Got the classic health indicator. Uh, if I shoot decals on the door, when I open and close the door, they move with it. They're just parenting these decals to it. You'll see some Z fighting again. Like The, the point really, of course, was not to remake Goldeneye. So much as to, oops, so much as to just play around with aspects of how this game works and get to know more about its specific systems since it was something I was getting, interested in getting to know to learn. So you can see already there, like, I, there's a lot of level collision data I haven't rebuilt, haven't bothered. Um, uh, over here we've got a, I built a turret, and it's, it's behaves like one does from the game, so it spins up its turrets in the same way. Uh, you'll see it's firing tracers. And part of you know, like the value in doing this was I figured out I had to look at the game and study the game and figure out okay how do they spray what are, what you know what are their handicap levels what are, what makes them easier to get to if you sneak up on them and so on and so I got to play with some of those variables and it turns out that they kind of like they turn towards you and then they wiggle side to side in this nice oscillating pattern I'm gonna try to not die and I destroy it no explosion I uh, got myself a working tank. So uh, you can see I look up and down, the barrel turns, top turns, I can still use my machine gun separately, as you could in the game. And we can drive this tank around a little bit. Right now I've just got this on WASD and uh, mouse, because I don't have an S64 controller hooked up. I do not have a way to shoot that barrel, at least not that I remember. Uh, and the barrel has its own collision, which a lot of people don't remember, it was actually a part of how the tank works in GoldenEye. So that you like can't, for example, uh, turn the barrel too close into a wall, or you can jam your tank up if you're trying to drive and it's blocking you, so that was kind of a neat aspect. Uh, the sky is faked. It's not using Unity skyboxes, probably pretty obviously, uh, but achieving this particular style, a very flat, constantly scrolling sky, required some, uh, I have an additional camera layer, using some, some occlusion uh, and layering those on to achieve that effect. You may have also noticed that this game is pretty low crummy resolution with anti-aliasing. Even if you're watching this video in HD, the lines around this video are much sharper. In this case, I'm rendering it to an outside texture lowering the resolution of that to try to better simulate the uh, blurry aliased look of the, uh, or bl blurry anti-aliased TV look of a late 90s game. Pop, 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 pop. And I also just want to show, you know, because part of what I love about the ability, when you start just playing around in these spaces, you can get areas, the ladders don't work, uh, where you couldn't in the real real deal, uh, unless you had a game shark. I think everyone here probably, if you grew up with these games, know exactly what I'm talking about. I want to find my way out of this tunnel uh, my memory is not serving me well. I think if I go this direction, I just want to run across the water. There's a neat Easter egg island out there. It's fun to uh, fun to go explore. Okay, so not there. Do ba do ba do ba do. There we go. Run out here. And again, I don't have any of the proper collision stuff. I don't think. Oh yeah, I did. I got my water moving. So I found a way to make the water effect move, just like the originals. And I'm probably gonna speed up this part of the video because it's gonna take a while. Actually, I'm going to slow down here for pointing out, notice how the gun bobs when I walk, right? I mean, so, and also how it turns when I turn. These are things that are very particular to the tuning of that game that, you know, I, I had some crude notion of how those worked in my head when I first would just see, see playing the game. Uh, I think it was useful as an exercise to try to re-implement those 
to pay really close attention to the specifics of how do those work, how far does it go, how fast do you have to turn, uh, and when you do, how you know how much can you angle the gun? And that's a real part of the game's mechanics where you can turn and whip off a shot to the side real fast, knock somebody in the head, uh, quicker reaction. Also makes it harder to shoot from the hip as opposed to using the aiming reticule. There we go. Here's our classic Easter egg island. And maybe not so much from that. So maybe I can. Let's see if I can climb up there. Uh, this was an old turret design from the earlier versions of the game. That's still left in the level mesh. Normally you can only see it with a sniper rifle from way over there. I think I can climb across it up here. Hopefully I don't fall through the level mesh. There we go. Yeah. Awesome. And so there's the there's the hidden turret. And again, what's cool, like, you know, this is Unity, right? So I can run this on any platform. Ladders don't work. Um, now, also, another thing I want to point out that I figured out from playing with this and recreating these aspects is how the gun particle effect works. Because, man, that looks real good, especially considering that this had to work on really primitive technology, right? So we know there can't be a lot of particles involved in that gun muzzle flash. But if you watch it, watch real closely as I turn left to right. Okay, when I turn left, it extends longer. When I turn right, it compresses vertically. And it's like it's got this length, this depth to it for the muzzle flash. And each gun has a different muzzle flash. Okay, so the shotgun has more of a more of an explosion out the front. And then the pistol, much smaller, but you can still see it, like it happens in front of the barrel. You know, it's really got it's got some depth to it. In addition to we got the shells ejecting, all that stuff. But let's just take a look at how that works. That, that was for me one of the more interesting discoveries to come from doing this. And the thing to realize is that most of these gun muzzle flashes actually have two different quad layers uh, where each gun has its own quad layer or two of sprite uh, and I think I actually recreated these based on ones that were ripped out of the uh, uh, ripped out of the ROM and so one of these each time the gun fires gets a random rotation so one time it'll be like this next time it'll be like that next time it'll be like that that helps give the flare on the outside some different shape to it and the front one just flashes but it gives it more consistency as to where some certain parts are for identifiability. And it, like I say, each gun has its own. So there's the KF-7 Soviets. Uh, if I flash in the shotguns, you'll see that that one's, I think it's, I put its layers closer. That one might even be the same one twice. It is, one of them spins. You'll see I've defined here in my scripts like a near and a far layer, as well as kind of where the particles eject from for the, for the shells. And so on for the PP-7. But just to show that effect again, it's really quite satisfying for such a simple piece of materials it's just two images and because it's only two images per gun despite the memory limitations that they had on the system they could give every gun a really unique muzzle flash signature so each gun that fires looks different feels different acts different uh, and I think that's just a really part of what made these games this game so awesome uh, back when it was you know new and again these I didn't I didn't have any good way to import the animation so I was just messing around and got these dudes doing calisthenics so anyway, Chris Delion here for Gamkido, game development training stuff. Hopefully you found this interesting. I encourage you, if there's a game that you love, you know, and let me be clear, I, I'm not releasing this. I'm not selling this to anybody. This is this is, this is is my hobby. This is me playing around. This is me practicing my game development skills. Oh, shoot. Uh, explore recreating parts of games that you loved when you were growing up. And in the process, you're going to learn a lot about game design, a lot about game development, a lot of particulars to what made the mechanics of these games at a very, very detailed, nuanced level work. So that's all I got for now. As always, I'll be trying to make some more material for y'all soon. I uh, hope you found it interesting, and I'll talk to you later. See you.